Hi friends, it's Alyssa. I am back with another reading for you today. I hope you've all been doing well. It's been a while. Um, this has definitely been quite a year. I've been super busy with work for the past few months, and then the last couple weeks of October I got sick, so those are the main reasons why I have been absent. Um, but I'm alive. Things, things have been going pretty well for the most part. I have no complaints. Um, and I hope that all of you have been hanging in there too. So today's reading topic actually was suggested or requested quite a while ago now. I'm sorry it's taken me so long to get to it, but we're kind of going to be talking about like the shadow self, asking the question, what do I need to heal? So these readings could potentially get a little bit dark. They might be triggering, just putting that out there. Um, I'm not intending to go like super deep into anything since these are just general readings. Um, and also I'm not a therapist or a psychologist or anything like that. So take what I say with a little grain of salt. This is just meant to be kind of a jumping off point, if you will, to get you thinking and reflecting on things, okay? If this isn't the reading for you right now, that's okay. I will try to have something a little bit lighter up for you guys very soon. So with that said, um, these are our piles. We have three here. For pile number one, we have Opalite. And I know this lighting is not great. It's pretty early in the morning, so I don't have a lot to work with right now. Um, pile one, Opalite. Pile two, we have our uh, blue Calcite. And for pile number three, we have the Amethyst Pendulum. So the timestamps, as usual, will be in the description. You can go down there, check out my links if you're interested. I do still offer personal readings if that's something that you might like to um, do. And uh, yeah, take a minute, pause the video if you need to, meditate on the piles, and I will see you in your reading. All right, so those of you who chose group number one with the opalite, let's find out what you guys need to heal. So the cards that we have here, all right, we've got the Daughter of Scepters, first of all. We have Eight of Grails, Nine of Knives, From the Cult Tarot, we have the Four of Skulls, Three of Crescents, and Ace of Roses. And then your Oracle card from the Oracle of Souls is Thanatos. So, okay. Group one. Let me, let me just start by kind of going over the general vibes of these cards, okay? So, first of all, the Daughter of Scepters. Um, the energy of this card in general tends to be very enthusiastic, very optimistic. She is youthful. She is uh, full of vitality, creativity, ideas. This is passion. This is fire energy, okay? The Eight of Grails. Uh, definitely has an, uh, a heavier feel to it. This card relates to letting go and moving on from things that are not serving our highest good. There's definitely an introspective kind of energy with this card as well. Like a lot of times this is about processing and letting go of emotions or our hurts. It also usually precipitates an ending of some kind, the start of a new chapter although endings and new beginnings are not always simple or easy. Um, the Nine of Knives, this is really about like inner turmoil, our core wounds, um, the things that haunt us. Its energy is very sharp, sometimes even kind of cruel. Uh, it can mean that we are being dominated or overwhelmed by negative projections because knives you know knives correspond to the swords in more standard tarot decks and swords 
swords energy, knives energy, this, the, these cards are really strongly associated with our thoughts, the things going on in our heads. So, um, our, and, and our perceptions. Okay. So, like I said, this can represent being overwhelmed by like negative ideas, negative projections, things that are being directed at us from others or that are coming from within ourselves. But this is not like a wholly negative card. Um, it can also be about overcoming the, the things that haunt us and cutting away, you know, the lies that we tell ourselves or that others tell about us. It's about like breaking free from illusions and learning to see ourselves for what we truly are, which is whole, unique, <laughs> divine beings, right? Now from the cult deck, the Four of Skulls, this relates to the psyche, the mind, and all of its complexities. Um, our identities, our understanding of ourselves. The Ace of Roses is a little bit similar to the Daughter of Scepters in the sense that this is kind of a fiery, intense energy as well. This really speaks of raw emotion, our most basic desires and passions. It tends to be kind of a primal energy. Um, and then the Three of Crescents here is sort of interesting. This card is about basically destruction, endings. Um, it relates to, you know, that part of the cycle of life, pretty much, uh, the, the fact that everything that exists eventually will reach an end, and with that end, it is transformed into something else. And this is Thanatos. The key words for this card are completion, support, and expediency. Um, this card also relates to endings, so we're sort of seeing a, th a bit of a theme here with that. We have three, arguably four cards that are associated with that. Um, and Thanatos is interesting because this card is really about like just getting things done. Thanatos is not really a leader, he's not really a figure that seeks out glory or fame or even acknowledgement, really. This is just about taking care of business, getting to the point, resolving what needs to be resolved, and knowing that resolutions are not always perfect, they're not always ideal. But sometimes, done and over with is better than perfect, because the ideal outcome is not always going to be possible, unfortunately. So those are your cards, group one. Um, I mean, immediately, I'm, I'm definitely seeing that there's something that you guys need to break free from in your lives. Uh, you know, this could be circumstances, or this could be something more internal. And I think for most of you, this probably is more internal, or at least there's an internal component, because there's a lot of uh, emphasis being placed here on, you know, like, the psychological, going back to the Nine of Knives, the Eight of Grails, um, you know, uh, I'm feeling, I'm feeling like many of you have something that you have buried deep, like trauma, a negative way of thinking, or even a bad situation that's become deeply ingrained in you, something that has been left unresolved for too long. It seems like a lot of you have maybe absorbed a lot of negative energy in your lifetimes from what other people have said to you or about you or from things that have been done to you, experiences that you've had. There are these, it's like there are these ideas that have been implanted into your minds. Ideas like, I am not valuable. I am not lovable, I'm gross, I'm stupid, I'm bad, somehow. Do you know what I'm saying? There are these lies, these falsehoods that some of you have internalized. And this is something that you may not even be fully conscious of. You may not be even aware that you have internalized these thoughts or these ideas or these perceptions of yourself. Um, 
it, it seems like a lot of you have maybe built armor around yourselves for protection, but also to maybe mask who you truly are from others, because it seems like some of you might struggle to be authentic. It kind of, it, it kind of feels like that's what a lot of this boils down to, like authenticity, your ability to be authentic. Um, because like, <sighs> It's like it's like you might struggle to embrace your real identity or things that you really love because you've internalized the idea that who you really are or the things that you really like are just not good somehow. And it's like these internalized ideas are keeping you in a stagnant state, preventing you from moving forward and growing and blossoming and being your best self. So they're saying that you need to break down those barriers. And in order to do that, you need to learn to embrace the things that you're passionate about. You have to dig in and identify the root of what has caused you to hide yourself. And I know I mentioned this already, but I feel like for many of you, this could go back to, you know, um, This could go back as far as childhood. This could be the result of, you know, the way that a romantic partner treated you or parents or even friends that, that may have been important to you at one point in your life. It just feels like what you guys need to heal is It relates to you being able to fully embrace your whole self, your true self. Um, I think a lot of people, just in general, have a, a tendency sometimes to think negatively about themselves or say bad things about themselves, because a lot of people actually in reality don't have a ton of confidence in themselves or don't have really high self-esteem. Like, many many people put up this front that they do, but in reality, many of us have doubts about ourselves. Many of us have insecurities about ourselves, and that's fairly normal. Um, well, I shouldn't say normal. It's common. It's, it's frequent. But the thing is, like, you have to learn how to recognize when you are projecting something onto yourself or when someone else is projecting something onto you. You have to be able to differentiate what is actually true and what is not. Do you know what I'm saying? So I think group one that you guys could benefit from meditating on how authentic you're really being in your lives, um, but more importantly, reflecting on how you actually perceive yourself. And ask yourself, are these perceptions actually true? And where did, these, where did they come from? Is there anything that I am masking or holding back? Am I living my most authentic life or is there something I've hidden away because I was told that it was bad? Does that make sense? And again, a lot of times this is something that people don't even realize they're doing. So, you know, you might be thinking, like, I don't, I haven't, you know, I, I don't hate myself. I don't hide who I am. I don't, I don't put myself down all the time. I don't think. But like, that's the thing. Sometimes these ideas, this stuff becomes so insidious that we don't even realize it's there until we actually dig in and draw it out. You know what I mean? So it's it's honestly like you are being called to undergo some some rebirth to in, in to an extent. Um you're being called to totally reevaluate the way that you think about yourself, the way that you perceive yourself. And, and also the way that you perceive the things that you enjoy or the things you're interested in, you know, that, that kind of stuff. Um, and, and you have to be able to think objectively about these things. Like, okay, 
objectively, are these ideas, these thoughts that I have about myself actually accurate and correct? Like, for example, say somebody, somebody has this feeling like they are not a good person. If that's the case, they need to ask themselves objectively, well, okay, in what way am I not a good person? Have I ever intentionally hurt someone? Or, or do I intentionally hurt people? Do I lie about things on purpose? Do I actively try to manipulate people? You know, stuff like that. You, you, it's, it's really about like taking a really long, hard, close look about your self-perception and being honest with yourself about it. And like I said, thinking about where these self-perceptions are originating from and how accurate they really are. And if you find that you have ideas about yourself that are not accurate or correct, then, um, you know, you, you've got to process why you have them and how you can work through them, how you can let them go and develop a more realistic and healthier, you know, self-image. Do you know what I'm saying? So, um, yeah, that's what I'm getting for you guys, group one. Like I said, I, I didn't intend to go like super deep into these things since these are just general readings. Um, take what resonates with you, leave the rest behind. Uh, given, you know, the nature of this topic, um, if something doesn't fit into your experience, don't try to make it fit. Although with these general readings, you know, sometimes Sometimes uh, the message isn't always like clear cut the way that it fits into your life. Sometimes you do kind of have to think about um, how the message is applicable to you specifically because it's not always exactly the way that I'm saying it is, uh, if that makes sense. So like for you specifically, the person watching this, you may not necessarily have low self-esteem or you may not necessarily feel that you're a bad person maybe it's pertaining to something a little bit different maybe it's something like you know you really like art but you're afraid to put your art out there you're afraid to create things because you have this idea that maybe you're not quite good enough to actually be an artist or you're not experienced enough or skilled enough or you need to learn more things before you can actually be an artist. You know what I'm saying? That's just kind of an example. But anyway, that's what I'm getting for you guys, group one. I hope this is insightful. Like I said, I hope that it resonates with you and um, hopefully gives you some things to think about and, and some uh, a starting point perhaps on your in your next steps towards healing and, and becoming, you know, your best self. So, uh, I think I'm going to leave it at that. Thank you so much for joining me, guys. I really appreciate it, and I hope I see you next time. Bye! Okay, those of you who chose group two with the blue calcite, let's find out what you guys need to heal. So, your cards, <clears throat> first of all, we have the Daughter of Knives, we have Five of Skulls, we have the Lord of Skulls, from the Cult deck we've got Tifereth, the Six of Hourglasses, Gamichikov, and your oracle card is Eternal Servitor. So, let me, give me a minute to look these over, group two. Right away, I'm definitely seeing kind of a, an overarching theme coming through with these cards. Um, 
so let me just sort of go over the general vibes of these cards, like what they're what they're about overall. Um, okay, interesting. All right, starting starting here, the Daughter of Knives. This corresponds to the Page of Swords in more standard tarot decks, and this card is really associated with clarity, insight, understanding. She is a very objective figure, very intelligent, and she is not someone who's restrained by illusions or fears or self-criticism. She's pretty tuned into who she is. She knows what she believes in and what she stands for. She knows what's important to her. She knows who she is, and she's, she's not willing to compromise on that. Next, the Five of Skulls. In general, this card is about loss or something breaking down. In this particular deck, it tends to speak of like the, the loss of something that has provided us with some level of security or comfort. And so the breakdown of this thing is often scary, uncomfortable. However, it's kind of like breaking out of your comfort zone. Um, your comfort zone obviously is where you feel most comfortable and secure, but when we step out of that, that's when we're able to really grow and learn new things about ourselves. That's when we're really able to develop as people. Um, the Lord of Skulls here is a very grounded, earthy kind of guy. He is a figure who is willful, resourceful, and stable. He's very practical, he's not the type to be distracted or led astray by fantasy or wishful thinking or what other people might think about him. Because he has, you know, he, he has better things to do than worry about those sorts of things. Um, he can detect bullshit from miles away and he's not going to engage with it because you know, he, he has better things to do. He has more important things that um, he wants to do and achieve and, and, and spend his time on, right? He's quite similar in a lot of ways to the Daughter of Knives that we just talked about. Um, this card also relates to the idea that you reap what you sow. If you put effort into something and you're serious about it, then you will be rewarded. You will get something back. Sometimes it just takes a little longer than we might expect to receive that reward. Um, so those are your vampire cards. Um, now, here we have Tifereth. This relates to, hmm, what's the word I'm looking for here? Well, it's, okay, it, it's kind of a card of illusions, like the superficial. That's, that's what I'm looking for. Um, it it kind of talks to me about the way that some people pursue beauty and affirmation from others, like excessively. It's, it's, it's kind of about like the fact that so much of what we see in our day-to-day -day lives is not reality. Like on TV, the internet, social media, there's so much that is not real, not authentic. As a society, we kind of like to exist in our own like fantasy worlds where everything looks beautiful and ideal and some people really put a lot of effort into preventing them, uh, presenting themselves in that certain way and, you know, changing themselves to fit into the mold of what is generally considered ideal. You know what I'm saying? Um, and, and still, like, as much progress as we, as human beings, have made over, over the decades, people who don't fit the mold still face prejudice sometimes, or they are just ignored, like they don't even exist. So that's, that's basically what this card is about, you know, that whole concept. Um, Next, I want to talk about this card, Gamichikov. I don't actually know if I'm saying that right, but anyway. This is interesting because this ties in a lot to what I was just talking about. This card is about fear, specifically fear of the other. 
um, fear of that which is different or that which does not fit into our view of what is right or what is ideal. So like this card sometimes can represent really heavy stuff like racism, um, prejudice against people of other religions, homophobia, transphobia, that kind of thing. Um, he is one of the death angels and he creates fear. He creates distrust between different groups, um, blame, and that division makes us weak and vulnerable. Um, so kind of a heavy card here. And it does, like I said, relate a lot to Tifereth. The, like, like these two guys really go hand in hand for me. Um, we also have here the six of hourglasses, which basically this card is about things that are hidden, the unknown, secrets, etc. Um, and then this oracle card, eternal servitor. The keywords here are hope, incompleteness, and yearning. This really talks to me about longing for something more, but not necessarily knowing what that something is, or in some cases, longing for something that cannot actually be achieved or that isn't sustainable, if that makes sense. It can also be about controlling our desires, um, recognizing that as human beings, we are constantly changing and reshaping ourselves, and that's okay. We should never stop learning and growing, but at the same time, we are whole. We are complete as we are. Anything that we feel might be missing can be found within ourselves if we look hard enough. Okay, that's kind of the, the message of this card. So, group two, the messages that I'm getting for you guys here are, are pretty interesting. Um, before I get, get into this, I just want to be clear that I'm not accusing anybody of anything. I'm not accusing anybody of being superficial or fake, anything like that. But it seems to me, group two, that your wound that needs healing relates to some need for affirmation or validation from external sources. Okay? What do I mean by that? Um, I, I feel like for many of you, you may struggle with self-acceptance or self-love. And so you might feel a need to conform to what other people think you should be. There may be some fear in being too different or standing out. You might be afraid to do anything that might draw unwanted attention to yourself. Things like that. Um, it, it just seems to me like a lot of you guys have made yourselves smaller in order to fit into a mold that has been presented to you as ideal. Okay? Does this make sense? Do you know what I'm talking about? Um, this message is a little similar to group one's message. So if you felt drawn to that pile, you might also want to listen to that one. It's similar in the sense that I feel like you guys are kind of hiding who you really are to an extent. But where group one's message was more about self perceptions, this message is more about the perceptions that other people have of you. Um, it's almost like group two some of you feel a need to control how others see you. And I mean, I, I think everybody is kind of like that to varying degrees. Like, obviously nobody wants to be seen negatively by other people. Obviously most of us want to be liked in general. Um, but this feels kind of excessive. This feels like a desire for control, for, for that control to the extent that it affects the decisions that you make or how you actually live your life. Is this making sense? And this, this doesn't necessarily mean that you are worried about how society in general perceives you. This could be more about how certain individuals or groups see you. For example, your family. 
um, your religious organization, your spouse. Do you understand me? You don't, it's like, it's like, what they're showing me here is that you don't want to be perceived as some other. There's this fear surrounding that. So it's like the healing that you need to do relates to whatever it is that's got you in this hold, whatever, the, whatever it is that has created this fear. And that could be, you know, codependency issues. It could go back to the way you were raised. I mean, there are a lot of different things that can lead to this type of fear. Um, and, and this, I want to say this need almost, or this desire to conform. And, <laughs> you know, talking about, I don't know, talking about conformity, just, it, it maybe sounds a little bit pretentious, but, but what I'm getting at is that you may need to really evaluate how you are handling yourself, how you are choosing to navigate your lives, and ask yourself really seriously, like, are my decisions being affected, or is the way that I present myself being affected by, you know, what, what I want other people to see me as, or how I want other people to perceive me? Um, so yeah, I, I mentioned already the possibility that this could relate more to your family or if you belong to a certain religion, maybe you're, you know, repressing certain aspects of yourself in order to fit into what that religion says is right and good. Maybe you're repressing certain parts of yourself to fit into what your family says is right and good, or romantic partners that you've had. You know, it just feels like... <sighs> there are structures that you've sort of lived your life around that are restraining you in some way. And you have to figure out how to break free from those restraints. Because that's what they are, like, these structures, I feel, are preventing you from actually living your best life and being free in who you are and accepting who you are, you know? And also, you might not be fully conscious that you are doing this. Like sometimes those structures become so ingrained in us that we don't even really think about them. We don't even realize what's happening. So like this is just a general reading, obviously. I can't tell you specifically what is causing this for you or where this is coming from, you know. Um, but 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 that's what I'm seeing for you guys group too. I, I really hope that this is helpful to you. I really hope that this <laughs> makes sense and, and resonates with you. Um, you know, if something doesn't quite seem to fit, don't try to force it. Take what resonates with you, leave the rest behind. Um, but, you know, sometimes with these general readings, y you do kind of have to identify like how the message really fits into your life because it's not always clear cut. It's not always exactly like how I'm saying it, right? Um, and again, it's not my intention to upset or offend anyone here. Um, but, but, but that's what I'm getting for you guys. Uh, meditate on what or how you may be hiding, okay? I think if you reflect on those questions, you might you might find that there are constraints around you that you weren't even aware of. And like, uh, I, I know I was, I, I know I started wrapping this up, but I want to mention like another like example of, of kind of what I'm talking about here to sort of illustrate my point. Like, like some people who are raised very religious, 
later in life, you know, they get out of that religion or they convert to something else, whatever. But they may sometimes they still carry like some of the teachings that they learned very early on, and like like religious trauma. Um, it causes them to suppress certain aspects of who they are because they learned early on that those things were bad. You know, a lot of people who have religious trauma suffer, especially in the realm of, like, their sexuality, like, that kind of thing. Um, like, logically, they, they might have an understanding that there's nothing wrong with sex or with their sexuality, but they have this deep, deeply ingrained, like, internalized idea that it is bad, it is wrong, it is something that should be suppressed. You know what I mean? That's just another example to sort of illustrate my point. Um, yeah, group two, that's what I'm seeing for you guys. That's... That's what you can work towards healing, okay? And I think I mentioned this at the start, but, you know, I, I wasn't intending to go super into detail about anything. This is just meant to sort of be a, a starting point or a jumping off point for you guys to meditate and, and start reflecting on things. Um, or maybe give you confirmation of, you know, what you need to heal. Maybe you already have some some awareness of what you need to heal and you're just looking to make sure that you're on the right track. Okay, so, um, yeah, I think that's going to do it for you guys, group two. I really hope this is helpful and I thank you for joining me today. I really appreciate it and I hope that I see you guys next time. Bye! Okay, and lastly, those of you who chose group three with the amethyst pendulum, let's find out what you guys need to heal. Okay, so your cards, first we have the ace of grails, followed by the fool, the hierophant. From the cult tarot, we have the ace of skulls, the Eight of Crescents, and the Five of Roses. And from the Oracle of Souls deck, we have the Morrigan. So, let's see, group three. Give me a second to look over these cards. Um, hmm. All right. So, starting with the Tarot of Vampires, um, the Ace of Grails. This card is really about being tuned into our emotions. It speaks to me of compassion. It's a very loving energy. It can represent expressions of emotions. Um, it can also be a message sometimes that we need to be sensitive or sympathetic to others, that we should extend our love and compassion outward. Um, the Fool is about limitless potential, new beginnings, the start of something brand new. This card is also associated sometimes with children or childhood. I think that's very much worth noting here. The Hierophant talks to us about tradition, convention. He's typically seen as a mentor, a teacher, or a father figure. I'm feeling... Okay, I'm, I'm getting something about like trust with this card. Hmm interesting trust okay now we also have here the ace of skulls this relates to origins origins ancestors beginnings the the essence of a thing um the eight of crescents is about repetition cycles repeating patterns something that is or at least seems to be inescapable and then the Five of Roses, um, the energy of this card is kind of predatory, to be honest. Um, it, it usually represents someone or something that preys on the weak. 
when someone has a need or a desire that must be satisfied and they don't care what they have to do to get it. Okay, and then this oracle card, the Morrigan, um, she relates to antipathy, introspection, opposition. The Morrigan is kind of a trickster sometimes. She likes to test, to challenge um, our will, our understanding of ourselves, our abilities, etc. And through those challenges, she aims to help us deepen our understanding of who we are, the light and the shadow aspects, the good and the bad. So group three, um, honestly, this honestly feels like this could be, I don't know, the, the most difficult message, uh, I guess you could say, out, out of all of them today. So, like, if this does not resonate with you, move on. Don't try to force anything to fit. If the message doesn't feel right to you, then it's not for you. Okay, I, I just felt like I really needed to say that here because this may be kind of a sensitive message, I think. Um, so, group three, this is relating to your inner child. And it also seems to be relating to your families. For many of you, um, I'm getting the impression that a lot of you who picked this pile probably experienced difficult childhoods, neglect, or even abuse of some kind. I feel like a lot of you in some way had your childhood taken from you. Like you didn't really get to just be a child. Maybe you didn't receive the love and care and attention that you should have. Maybe you were harmed in some way. Um, there was Maybe there was a lot of fear in your environment growing up. Um, or, or maybe you were just forced to grow up too quickly and take on too many responsibilities for a kid. Whatever the case, it seems like you were affected by a pattern that was perhaps passed down in your family. Um, you know, it's, it's been fairly well established that abuse is often cyclical. Like, people who were abused sometimes end up repeating the same behaviors if they don't seek out help. And sometimes they don't seek out help because they never recognize that what they experienced was abuse, that it was wrong, and so they don't think about how repeating those behaviors is just creating more suffering, you know? Um... I, I, well, I, I get the sense that for a lot of you who chose this group, this information may not be news to you exactly. I mean, I feel like most of you already have some awareness of what needs healing. It just seems like you guys are struggling against trauma that was passed down to you, and you're at a point now where you have to make the choice to break that cycle. I feel like that's what a lot of you are already doing. You're you're making the effort to break the chain, and that is powerful. Um, but while you're doing that, it's really important that you not neglect what your inner child needs from you. Because it seems like... Maybe, maybe shifting your focus to healing your inner child could really help you to move forward with your life. Like, like listen to what your inner child has to say. Pay attention to what hurt them. When you connect to your inner child and you go back to the past, there's usually a lot of really difficult emotions that come up. And it can be really scary just thinking about opening that door, right? Because then it's like, now I have to face the feelings. You, you, you're no longer just looking back objectively on something that happened. You're now allowing the emotions tied to those events to come forward. And that whole process really sucks. It does, I know. Um, but it's so necessary because when a feeling is pushed way, way down, it doesn't just go away. It's still inside you, festering manifesting itself in other ways, still causing problems for you. So in order to let those feelings go, you gotta sit with them, you gotta let them come to the surface and, and feel them, because that's how we process things, by just letting ourselves feel them, writing them out. 
And um, it can be very painful, it can be frightening, it can definitely take a toll on you. So it's important to be gentle with yourself. Like, give yourself space right now to sort through this baggage that you need to sort through. Tell your friends, hey, I'm going through some stuff right now, I could just use a little extra support. Um, but yeah, that's, that's what I'm getting group three. Like, you guys, in order to help you to heal, and like I said, I feel like this probably isn't going to be, like, surprising to you guys necessarily, um, but in order to help yourselves in this healing process, I think that connecting to your inner child and extending love and affection to them, you know, giving them the care that they maybe didn't get, um, is going to be helpful in your healing. And something else that I want to mention with healing your inner child, something that could be helpful is basically reframing the past. You know, you can look back on things that you went through as a kid from an adult perspective. And with the knowledge and the insights that you have developed as an adult, you can reframe some stuff for your inner child to help them understand what they went through and therefore help them soothe some of the pain that's lingering, if that makes sense. This may not be helpful for every situation because sometimes... Even as adults, it's very difficult to understand why someone might have done certain things. And also, this is not meant to excuse anything that might have happened to you, but rather explain. Excuses and explanations are not the same. An explanation just takes away some of the fear and confusion surrounding why did this happen and why me? You know what I'm talking about? Um... Yeah, you know, I, I said that this these messages could get a little heavy, um, and that that I didn't want to go super into depth into anything since this is just general and, you know, um, I, I I don't want to get too specific with the messages because then you know it it may resonate with fewer people. Um, or people may have a harder time understanding like how the message is applicable to them and their life. Um, but yeah, this is... I, I feel like a lot of you were just kind of looking for some confirmation or looking for some insight into like what to do next. Not necessarily what you know, what your big problem is that you need to heal, but like what to do next on this journey of healing. Does that make sense? Um, but yeah, I hope, I, I hope that this resonates with you guys. If something doesn't seem like it fits, you know, don't try to force it to fit. Take what resonates with you. Leave the rest behind. Um, thank you guys for joining me today. I really appreciate it. You guys are powerful, group three. I just feel like I should mention that. You guys are powerful. Like, your energy is so resilient what I'm feeling um, so don't forget that don't forget how powerful you are and that you know you 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 can make it through anything you can do anything you can do anything group three um, anyway yeah thank you for joining me today I really appreciate it and I hope I see you guys next time group three Bye.